Good morning, everybody, and thank you very much for joining uh, Intel Security and Axial Systems from uh, the UK for this morning's presentation surrounding McAfee Next Generation Firewall and the Security Connected Threat Ecosystem. Our agenda for today is, uh, is to cover off uh, not only the, uh, the, the value of Intel Security's products um, and Intel Security's next generation firewall, uh, we're also going to provide a next generation firewall and advanced evasion technique overview, uh, an advanced evasion technique and a beta technical demonstration, the next generation firewall and security management center technical demonstration, and then we will cover off Q&A at the end for around about 10 minutes. Um, the presenters that we have with us today are Martin Oll, uh, one of Intel Security Security Engineers, myself, Sam Duckett, I'm the Next Generation Firewall Sales Manager, and Craig Booterstone, uh, one of our technical security experts from our trusted partner, Axial Systems in the UK. Craig, I'd like to uh, hand over to you so that you, uh, you might give us a, a quick overview and a brief outline of uh, Axial Systems, and, uh, and uh, if, if I might pass the ball to you now, please. Thanks, Sam. Um, welcome, everybody, and thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to attend this session. Uh, Axial have been around for over 25 years and are a value-added reseller and systems integrator focusing on networking, security, and services. We deliver these services, whether that be pre-sales, post-sales, implementation, training, or support, to a wide range of customers from varying business sectors, from finance to telco, from retail to the public sector, and so on and so on. We've been involved in security uh, solutions and services implementation for over 20 years and have a very long-standing relationship with McAfee or Intel Security. Um, that relationship dates back to the to the late 90s, um, so a very, very long-standing relationship and a trusted relationship from both parties. Axial also have invested very heavily around the technical skills that they can provide or we can provide. We have um, the status of authorized channel engineers across the entire McAfee portfolio. We also provide professional services for McAfee themselves. So McAfee hold us in a uh, status of very much a trusted security partner and we deliver the services on behalf of McAfee for their own customer base. So we have a very, very, as, as Sam was saying earlier, a very trusted and a very fantastic relationship with McAfee where there's a, a mutually beneficial relationship. We'll be holding a Q&A session after the presentations for any questions that arise following these presentations from Sam and also from Martin. Hopefully you'll, uh, your eyes will be open to some, not new, but some existing security areas where it's maybe not in the uh, in the public eye as much as it should be, but that is changing and you'll see that from the presentations that uh, we're going to go through today. Yeah, on those QA sessions, can you please, ra if you have any questions, please raise them via the chat window on the WebEx session. Once again, thanks for your time. We'll be going through what we can do to help you or to give you any assistance, whether that be professional services, proof of concepts, etc., around these technologies and any other, any, any, anything else within the McAfee portfolio at the end of the session. So again, once again, thanks for your time, and I'll hand back over to Sam. Yeah, thank you very much, Craig. And uh, as, as Craig mentioned, the relationship between Intel Security and Axial is one of uh, one that has been built on a foundation of trust, but also based on Axial's ability to deliver um, and perform for McAfee. So without further ado, I'd like to uh, talk with you about the evolution of uh, the firewall. Um, now, over the past 25 years, firewalls have evolved from these simple packet filters uh, through to traditional stateful firewalls. Um, up to now, where we kind of see the first next generation firewalls coming through in about 2012. Now, this was due to the need for uh, inspection throughput and application and user awareness as well. 
Now, moving forward, businesses uh, really discovered that there was a need not only for a performance-enhanced next-generation firewall, which can keep your network running fast and avoid downtime, but also something and a solution which provides central management for large and disparate organizations, um, provides protection against advanced persistent threats and advanced evasions, and as mentioned, keeps your network up and running. We now come to 2014 and 2015, and, and with the acquisition of uh, Stonesoft Networks by Intel Security, we have really changed the landscape of uh, what we would refer to as now a connected next generation firewall. And what this means for the user is that you have a, a, an edge device or a network device which is now communicating with your endpoint, with your security information and event management systems, communicating with your sandbox to create and check file integrity, but also as a part of Intel Security's Global Threat Intelligence Network, you can also communicate with the millions of nodes worldwide to ensure that you have the latest threat intelligence to protect your business. So I hear it all the time, a firewall is a firewall is a firewall is a firewall. Well, I disagree with that, and I disagree with that because I believe that, you know, with all the vendors out there, uh, you really need to differentiate yourselves, not just based on, uh, on unique selling points, but based on value you're bringing to a business. We do this in five ways. We use our unified software core to provide a single platform for protecting your business and also increasing a return on investment when deploying Intel Security Next Gen Firewall. We have a very strong centralized management system in the form of the SMC, which allows a business to control uh, diverse and disparate network security deployments, uh, either around the globe or, or locally in a country with multiple branch offices. We have the ability to protect against some 800 million combinations of uh, advanced evasion techniques, a technique used to deliver advanced persistent threats or known malware to a business to, uh, to create uh, dis disruptive activity, but also to provide a hacker with return on investment. We have a number of solutions included on the next generation firewall, including clustering of up to 16 nodes, load balancing inbuilt, but also some really nifty and cool tools around uh, connecting to the internet and using multiple ISPs to avoid downtime when you do connect your business to the internet. And lastly, McAfee and Intel Security have uh, developed the security connected ethos and built this into all of their products um, to protect businesses not only on an individual basis but globally. And I'll come on, on to that in a little bit to explain a little bit more how that works and what value that's going to bring to your business. So firstly, I'd like to start with our unified software core. And this is really the, uh, you know, the, 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 the meat to the bones when we talk about our next generation firewall. Now, Intel Security Next Gen Firewall was, de was developed around a single code base or what we refer to as this unified software core. It provides great flexibility allowing McAfee Next Gen Firewall to run on either purpose-built hardware as a dedicated physical appliance or off-the-shelf hardware as a soft software solution or as a virtual appliance on a hypervisor. McAfee uh, Next Gen Firewall can even be deployed uh, as multiple virtual contexts on a physical appliance. Now, whether this is to segregate security environments or run specific tasks on specific machines, it does provide you with a solution that can optimize the data plane, providing some significant performance advantages, and that's regardless of the security role or the number of active security features. So when we talk about the unified software core, uh, we're providing a solution that is very scalable, that can be used by other small, medium businesses or enterprise and military-grade networks. And again, deployable as either a software solution, a virtual solution, or a physical appliance for your network or data center. However, the biggest benefit of our unified software core is derived from McAfee's next-gen firewall's ability to morph and change into a variety of security solutions to provide the right level of security as the business needs it. Now, with a simple license change, the firewall can be deployed as either an industry-leading next-gen firewall, a dedicated IPS, a firewall with built-in VPN functionality, or a Layer 2 firewall. 
The next generation firewall will deliver the right level of security when your business needs it. So you don't have to do a hardware workaround or forklift all of your appliances every time your business grows and you need to upgrade all the regulatory environment changes. So we've talked about the unified software core, and I mentioned the, uh, the security management center, or the SMC, um, earlier. And, and Martin's very kindly going to do a demonstration for us. But what the SMC uh, really does for us is provide a powerful and comprehensive system. Now, uh, you know, McAfee Security Management Center is the most powerful and comprehensive system on the market, but why is that? Uh, our management system just manages one unified software core, and everything is built in, uh, proactively designed, and not bolted on as a reactive measure. Having that, we're able to manage your entire network from one single point of management and control, no matter if it consists of either mixed te technologies, different security products or vendors, or the siloed approach. Like different customers, locations, and sites can change the way you manage a network, all of this can be done from one central point. Now, on top of that, we also provide better situational awareness capabilities. Additionally, we can receive and uh, action log data from even third-party third devices and other vendors. Now, this is something that no other next-gen firewall or, or network security vendor can do. So it really is true power through comprehensive management capabilities. Advanced evasion protection. Now, uh, lots of marketing slogans are being thrown around the security world, and no doubt a lot of you will have heard of advanced persistent threats in the past. Now, I just want to take some time uh, you know, with some of these definitions um, so that we can get a solid foundation for the discussion and the demonstration for AETs, uh, so that we can try and help everybody improve the situation. So we talk about APTs, or Advanced Persistent Threats. Uh, essentially, this is a hacker. Now, this can be, uh, you know, in my opinion, anyone from a, a group of children trying to break into a sweet shop with a hammer through to a state-sponsored, uh, heavily financed uh, DDoS attack. Now, these organizations typically have the motivation to penetrate a certain, certain target by using multiple intelligence and hacking methods typically to stay undetected for a long period of time. We may refer to this as shady rat, for example. Evasive malware is, uh, is, is the second terminology that we would use. Um, and we all know what malware is, but evasive malware is, is malicious code that is designed to evade any security device and process when penetrating a target host, endpoint, or system. Before the malware is designed, a huge amount of investigation and testing is done by the, by the attacker. For example, Stuxnet. Now, AETs are advanced evasion techniques, and this phrase was coined by Stonesoft, and advanced evasion techniques were discovered by Stonesoft in partnership with a number of universities and academic organizations. Now, AETs are hacking methods and malware delivery methods, the means to deliver a malicious attack and bypass network security devices completely undetected. They work as effectively an access all areas pass or a master key to anywhere for a highly motivated hacker. With resources, developing AETs does require some effort, but it is worth doing depending on the investment that you're looking to get out of it as a hacker. Now, I just want to just want to make it clear. You know, imagine a vulnerable operating system used for controlling an industrial system at a factory, for example, that can't be updated or, or reconfigured all of the time. If we halt manufacturing, then we halt the business. We start to lose money. Now, typically, organisations will rely rely on a next-gen firewall or an IPS to protect those systems. Now, these security devices do promise 90% plus coverage against exploits that target vulnerabilities of those operating systems. By developing and using advanced evasion techniques, that coverage drops to absolute zero. And all those expensive security infrastructure and devices are rendered completely ineffective and useless. Now, this is deadly serious. You must test and be 100% sure your security technologies can detect, and more importantly, stop advanced evasion techniques and AET-born attacks. So we talk about AETs, and, and you know we talk about this every day. And you may have been lucky enough to speak with one of our reps and, and get a little bit more information surrounding this. But every time we talk to our customers about advanced evasion techniques, 
They ask if our technology detects and reports AETs. And they want to be sure that AETs are relevant and an increasing threat. So let's be honest, real life statistics on AETs are be missing, um, simply because statistics are always based on what can be detected, analyzed, and reported. Uh, advanced evasion techniques aren't, mainly because the security devices that are supposed to be detecting these cannot detect these. So like malware exploits, viruses, botnets, or malicious code, or Trojans, for example, uh, in other notes, the, the known uh, are always shown in statistics. Uh, we must start putting more effort into analyzing the unknown type attacks, where executed, and how they penetrated our networks, how they bypassed our state-of-the-art security technologies, and more importantly, how they did it completely undetected. Now, the number of unknown type attacks is increasing. Those where there is no explanation of how the attack was done, um, you know, if we look at this in infographic here and we look at the unknown attacks, you know, that color brown is, is, is significantly covering a lot, of, a lot of this page and not just targeting specific services but multiple different services from a business as well. So I'd like to talk to you about, about AETs and, and the means of, uh, of an attack. Now, unknown to many security administrators, uh, determined attackers can use advanced evasion techniques to bypass most of today's devices. AETs will deliver an advanced persistent threat, or APT, through advanced evasion techniques such as masking or obfuscation. Uh, once they're inside your network, threats are reassembled on the other side of your security device. Uh, here they can hide, they can execute and propagate completely unchallenged. Uh, sometimes they would sit for months un un untouched um, you know, and execute at a time suitable for the hacker. Now, the numbers behind this are very worrying. I would say there are more than 800 million combinations of AETs that have been identified to date. So things to take away from uh, advanced evasion techniques, this isn't an attack. This is the means to disguise the malicious attack. You know, attack must be zero day or evasions may be used with old known vulnerabilities. Next gen firewall products are 99% ineffective in detecting or blocking AETs. And signatures are, are rendered useless, you know, ineffective uh, if proper traffic normalization um, is, is not completed prior to inspection. So, What's in it for the hackers? Now, uh, we hear the term hacker and black hat a lot of the time. You know, we understand these guys to be, uh, you know, hyper-intelligent uh, men and women who, uh, who have a motivation, whether that motivation is ethical, moral, or, moral, or uh, motivation through finance. Um, so what is in it for the hackers, and why will we see this phenomenon more in the future? Well, firstly, when developers will find sophisticated exploits and malware, hackers invest money, time, and effort. Now, sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on what the return will be. So one good example of the development of a zero-day ex um, exploit for, for the hacker, when their creation is detected, there will be countermeasures quickly created and distributed. Now, customers often ask us about the use of, uh, of advanced evasion attacks in a zero-day attack. Uh, as there is no single security device that would be able to detect or stop it, it's difficult to know. By using the AETs, however, hackers can keep the zero-day attack under the radar for longer and improve their ROI. Another example uh, is recycling of, of older malware. Now, here evasions can bypass security systems that will, not, that, that will only detect the old signature or fingerprint, again, rendering uh, the security device useless if it's trying to detect an AET. Secondly, advanced evasion techniques work, work as an access all areas pass to the club. Now, think about a criminal having a master key to your whole network. It's an extreme thought, but it is very scary, and we believe hackers have developed these AET toolkits that are way more advanced than we know about. Now, we know this from examples where hackers have made their targets beforehand, and despite preparation, they just get in. And thirdly, anonymity and not getting caught is important for hackers. In the case of nation states, hacking in order to avoid embarrassing diplomatic situations and conflicts, for example. Nation states will want to stay hidden as much as possible and for as long as possible. And AETs, they're an excellent way, way of doing that. You know, they, they are an excellent solution for the motivated hacker. So what does McAfee and Intel Security do differently uh, in terms of uh, detecting advanced evasion techniques? Well, here's the basic difference in the inspection process explained step by step. 
It's really a matter of the normalization process. We decode every layer of traffic before the actual context and content inspection. If you skip that and just do limited DPAC inspection or TPI processes, devices are very, very easy to bypass. We instead use a process called data normalization. We normalize and decode everything horizontally, then do full stack inspection from clean and evasion-free traffic. Here's why the machination firewall can handle and provide protection against AETs. We're not talking about a slight difference or a minor gap to our competitors. Our approach and technology is fundamentally different. And thanks to our history of research and technology information that started years ago, we can do it today. And we are years ahead of the competition. Um, we don't take shortcuts. Everything we do is, uh, is a proactive measure. Now, we decode all the protocol layers properly. It requires a lot of memory and processing power. But thanks for our unified coding and intelligent processes, we can do it. Others pick and choose which layers they decode and which are left out. Evasions utilize these shortcuts. Now, our normalization process is unique. It removes all of these anomalies and evasions uh, before inspection. But we also normalize the data stream horizontally, not just packets or pseudo packets. Evasions utilize the limitation of inspection packets. We do, we do the actual vulnerability-based fingerprinting on fully decoded and normalized data streams. Others use pattern matching, shell code detection, exploit signatures, or even vulnerability matching. But evasions can fill this matching process very easily, simply by disguising the attacks so that matches cannot be made uh, and that the traffic looks normal. Now, we have the most advanced AET testing environment uh, in-house in, in to do further evasion research on new protocols and to do extreme product testing. Every single week, we run somewhere in the region of 5 million advanced evasion technique attacks against our own products. And if a new working evasion is found, it is analyzed, normalization process is fixed. Others rely on a very limited number of evasions and third-party tools that are publicly available. Now, hackers know what McAfee knows, uh, but not what's available in some documents. And we update and upgrade our products against AETs constantly. Others' AET capabilities do not change, but that's because they first need to redesign their products. So as a business, why should I worry about this today? How does it affect me in the real world? Well, this is the latest situation, and it tells the whole story of why we should be worried about this. Here's the deal. With a Vega, now a free download, and anyone can visit the McAfee website uh, to download uh, the Aveda tool at aveda.mcafee.com, anyone can get the same kind of results. Now, the evasions used in the tests, they're old ones, and they've been reported years ago to all of our vendors. Um, but they appear to be too busy to, uh, to fix the problem. Now, we have around 10 devices in our uh, test bed in the Intel Security Labs. We execute and exploit the config one, uh, in fact, against these DUTs to see which evasions work and which can deliver the exploit undetected. So if we were to focus on TCP segmentation, for example, with certain random, random dynamic bike sizes, it has a 90% success rate against the devices. This is a very sad story, especially for a market who is trying to protect not only our family, not only our children, not only our businesses, but everyone against the scourge of the internet. So I wanted to talk about, uh, about our high availability technology. Now, uh, McAfee's, uh, McAfee's next generation firewall uh, was, was, was designed originally very much with, uh, with network uptime and network performance in mind. Uh, we would say we can provide 99.999% of uptime, or the five nines, to those of you who, uh, who have heard that phrase thrown around. Now, today's business demands a fully resilient network uh, and a fully resilient network security solution. Intel Security Next Gen Firewall delivers very high scalability and availability in several powerful ways. Uh, native active clustering of up to 16 nodes can be clustered together with no third-party device solution or appliance to facilitate that clustering. Superior performance and resiliency is provided, um, you know, and certainly a need when running demanding security applications such as DPI and VPNs. 
We have very transparent session failover, providing industry-leading availability and service availability for security systems and your network. MACB and Intel Security Next Gen Firewall even supports transparent failover of multiple software and hardware versions within the same cluster. For those of you who have had to bring down your firewalls off your network to complete upgrades, this process can be damaging. It can create downtime. Uh, okay, it's downtime at three in the morning, which you know might not affect the end users, but ultimately your network is offline. If you can if you can keep your network online while you do these upgrades. It provides more value to the business. It also means that the people who have to complete the upgrades are getting more time back to be able to uh, focus on the tasks that really matter. So I talk about high availability on our firewalls. High availability for a business is, uh, is, 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 is all well and good, but one must ensure connectivity to the internet. Uh, McAfee Multilink ext extends our high availability coverage to the network and EdgeSec VPN connections, provides the confidence of non-stop security along with high performance for every deployment. Now, we can aggregate links and connect multiple ISPs through to a firewall to improve either the, uh, the, the, the rate of connections for your business to the internet um, or to avoid downtime. Or if you are using an MPLS network and you would like to use that for only mission critical data, why not use a, 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 a solution from Intel Security to send less mission critical data by selecting which ISPs and which phone lines you use to send which data? So lastly, uh, I mentioned Security Connected, and, uh, and, and, and I just want to uh, explain this to everyone. Um, you know, we, we, we give out the example where our endpoint solutions have a positive effect network protection. Now this overview here provides you with a complete uh, picture on the security connected vision. The connection to different McAfee solutions here is illustrated. Now we'll give you an example to understand this slide. If some, someone in your network is trying to download a file, uh, we have the ability to check against our threat intelligence exchange or TIE uh, if this file has ever been seen on your network before. Now, if TIE uh, uh, hasn't, then uh, we will ask the Global Threat Intelligence Network if this file has ever been seen around the world. Now, if the file is unknown, we can deliver this file to our ATD solution, which is our sandbox solution, to do a complete static and dynamic code analysis. ATD, being our sandbox solution, gives the results uh, out to TIE server and to the next generation firewall. TIE automatically updates endpoints across your network. Um, with this information, meaning that you are protected on your endpoints before this file ever reached your endpoint terminals. Now globally, uh, Security Connected is facilitated by our Global Threat Intelligence Network. Now we mentioned uh, that signature-based anti-malware really isn't enough and that you need an additional countermeasure um, to protect against sophisticated malware. So I also mentioned the need to leverage uh, you know, uh, cloud-based threat intelligence and reputation information. Now, the idea is that cloud-based threat intelligence is used as a combination to local detection and countermeasure techniques uh, to improve the effectiveness and accuracy of security countermeasure decisions. Now, our global threat intelligence network service works by capturing intelligence information on anomalous behavior from every McAfee deployed sensor globally. These sensors include endpoints, web gateways, email gateways, uh, nets, firewalls, etc. And it works by analyzing the data and providing intelligence back to the McAfee sensors by way of reputation information. So the reputation of a URL to site advisor or the reputation of an IP address to the desktop firewall or the reputation of a, of, of, of a file to virus scan enterprise. Now, any type of intelligence is only relevant and valuable if it is captured from large volume of sources and provides every facet of information that is relevant. This is what's unique about McAfee GTI. It is a unique in the industry in terms of scale and scope. In terms of scope, due to the breadth and depth of our portfolio, we're able to capture intelligence and anomalous behavior from all vendors and all threat vectors across network, file, email, and web. This allows us to examine the new threat from a 360 degree perspective to decide on reputation information across IP addresses, file, URL, email, email message content. It's unique in terms of scale as we capture more information from more sensors than any other security vendor globally. 
So in summary, uh, for the next generation firewall, uh, these powerful features really do benefit our customers. They translate into very strong differentiators that set us apart from our competition. Now, we'll examine some of these uh, features in a little bit more detail uh, now, following, uh, following the technical presentation. Um, but just to reiterate, um, you know, the same next generation firewall product uh, is available on a multiple uh, on multiple different platforms. Now we offer the next gen firewall technology uh, either as physical appliances, uh, you know, for data centers and rack mounting, as a software to install on legacy hardware to reduce the amount of money you're spending on your hardware lifecycle, or as a virtual appliance. Let's say you're virtualizing with VMware and you are looking to consolidate space or you are looking to run multiple firewalls but not install the hardware. Well, we can help with that as well. So just a note against our virtual appliances and clustering, Active Active is, is not officially supported, but not typically required. And if you'd like to know more information about this, please do, please do get in touch with Axial Systems, and, and Axial will be happy to, uh, to talk through the various deployment options for our solution. So I'll be fairly blunt with this slide, uh, but McAfee, McAfee's uh, next generation firewall benefits uh, provides the best protection for your business and digital assets. It adapts very easy to your security needs as your business changes. Uh, very scalable in terms of uh, deploying to small, medium businesses or, or larger enterprises. Uh, the management center itself will optimize the productivity of your employees and your customers. Martin is going to come on and show us exactly how we can do that with the demonstration. Above all, we can lower the total cost of operation for both security and network infrastructure and reduce the, uh, reduce the amount of money that you are spending on your hardware life cycles. And of course, uh, you know, please do reach out to Axial again uh, if you'd like to just get a little bit more information surrounding the benefits of Intel Security Next Gen Firewall. Now, lastly, I just wanted to mention some of our third-party rec recognition. Um, you know, this is an established, very well-respected product validated by third parties. Now, Gartner have said uh, this product is listed as visionary in the latest Magic Quadrant. Now, that was 2013. Now, just as with the acquisition of Nitro Security or SIM or Sanchigo database security, McAfee's ownership should improve its execution and make the Magic Quadrant leader. This is possible due to McAfee's worldwide presence, sales, service, and support. Integration with other security products in the network, endpoint, and SIM. NSS Labs have uh, tested our, our, our kit, and uh, any of you know, who know them know that they enjoy breaking things. Um, and they said the next-gen firewall's unified software design makes it modular, which is the reason for the same product to be recommended in three different configurations, separately as a standalone firewall, also as a standalone IPS, and also as a next-gen firewall. Now, the next-gen firewall uh, has other third-party certifications and tests to show real-world quality and protection and performance, including things like our common criteria EAL4+, FIPS 140-2, uh, um, and Ixalabs as well. Now, please do feel free to reach out to Axial uh, Systems or visit our website um, where you will be able to find all of this information should you require a bit more, uh, a bit more information surrounding not only our tests but also for our certifications as well. So thank you very much to, uh, to, you know, for listening to, to me. I am now going to hand the presentation over to my colleague Martin, who is going to present on uh, advanced evasion techniques and uh, provide a demonstration of our security management console. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sam, for the great introduction uh, for our solution. And uh, yeah, I would like uh, first uh, thank you for for your uh, for your time today to attend the, the webinar. And I would like firstly to talk a little bit about advanced evasion techniques and uh, my SMC demo environment and what I will uh, show you live today in my in my uh, demo. Well, um, I have a tool in place. What uh, Sam mentioned already that is our evader tool. The evader tool is. A free what you can download from our McAfee website um, and you can just implement this in your environment to test existing solutions like existing inline IPS systems or next generation firewall, uh, firewalls with uh, deep packet inspection functionality for example. So just to provide you with a couple of information how these two look like, I just want to show you here a couple of slides. <coughs> well, 
I have uh, the Aveda tool is uh, is a uh, predefined Linux operating system, which you just really mount, for example, in your VMware environment, and uh, also it provides you with the website or with the web page where you can select exploits, you can configure the test environment by obfuscating, for example, malware, and then run and trying to bypass your uh, the inline ITX, for example. To, the, to do that, there are really, really easy steps to, to use our evasion tool. The first step is we can select an exploit. So we have three predefined exploits what we can use. So to, buy the, to use a configure or to use multiple uh, RDP VOS um, exploits to try to bypass these uh, IPS systems, for example. So when you're using that, you also have done after that the ability to select and identify the attack target. You also have the ability to create and, and select the system what you use in your environment, what you would like to bypass. Uh, and after that, you just can easily really run, for example, and select the evasion uh, technique by do that manually or do that in a completely automatic way. So uh, I will just provide you with an overview in my lab scenario. I will come now to the live demonstration. So I have here in my environment, uh, in, my, in my lab environment, um, just three things. I have an attacker machine, so that's our Aveda tool. I have a Snort IPS, what is inline, and I also have uh, and victim web server where I have a uh, web server hosted. So it's really like a really easy uh, website where um, I host uh, a server. So I just um, change the presenter rights uh, to my um, to my uh, to my computer, and then I will provide you with the um, live demonstration. Sam, can you just pass me the presenter rights? Yeah, sure. Perfect. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you very much. <coughs> okay. And uh, of course, if there are any questions, um, you know, during this uh, this brief period while Martin just sets up the uh, the demo, um, please do let us know via chat. Uh, alternatively, if there are any questions following this presentation. Uh, then you would be able to email uh, email Craig uh, or Axial Systems. And again, I'll show the contact details for all of the contacts at the end of this presentation. So I believe Martin's good to go now. Perfect. Thank you, Sam. Great. Okay. I just um, uh, discussed this already and uh, providing you with this information. So as you can see here, I have a, a really easy web server uh, hosted. And I tr um, behind my inline IPS, what you seen in the uh, really high level light work diagram. And I will try now with Aveda from the other side to bypass these snort IPS and uh, to uh, get access to these web server, for example. So this is this is uh, the web server what you can see here and this is my, my Aveda tool. Well I downloaded from the Mac website. To try to, to get access to this web server, I will today use um, an HTTP PHP uh, highlight uh, exploit, but I will try uh, vulnerability more, and will try after that, as in selected exploit outcome, to bind the child to have direct access to the server. So after that, I configure my test environment by just uh, using, for example, uh, the option to, in, uh, to bypass or to the device under the test, the in, in IPS system in the layer 2. And then just use an IP address, what Aveda should use to bypass the IPS system. I also will configure my um, at victim, so the victim IP address. And after that, I will just uh, run these exploits. <coughs> but to show you that, of course, it's not IPS is working and it's working properly, I will just use a manual evasion without any obvious case. So as you can see here, you can manually select different uh, evasions to bypass the system. But what I will do at first completely without any uh, obvious case, I just try to bypass the system directly and will execute now the, uh, the uh, run. So 
as you can see here, the attack failed by uh, that the connection has terminated. And let's have a look first on the SNOT IPS, what the SNOT IPS is showing in the lock. So I just moved that here. As you can see here, the SNOT IPS has dropped this uh, transaction and has detected that this is the best application file, the best application attack, and has dropped the package, so has blocked the communication. So now let's try to completely do this in automatic evasion. What you can do, you can select multiple obfuscating methods uh, by just splitting up the payload in multiple pieces and then sending them through the IPS. What it's not to do is it's looking at the package as they go by, but with the data that is splitting up this and it's, uh, and it's not, it's not looking at the whole picture. And that is exactly what happens as well as other vendors. So what I would do, I just automat uh, select the automatic evasion and just execute. So what I will do, I will just jump back to my SNOT IPS to show you the logs and uh, to show you the activities from Aveda. Aveda will try to use different uh, combinations, different methods to bypass the system. And as you can see here, that SNOT is detecting multiple times and uh, is blocking and dropping the packages and the connections. Now, let's try to look back to the Vader tool if we find some successful attacks. So, as you can see here, I just stopped that. As you can see here, we have uh, a Vader found automatically successful attacks um, in, in the multi-layer. After, for example, 13 seconds, you can run this for hours and the Vader is trying all the time uh, to use uh, multiple methods to bypass. So now let's try to re-attack, for example, with this uh, vulnerability uh, the system. I just rerun the attack. And as you can see, it's going through. And now I have the ability to open the shell. So I have complete access to the shell through the IPS to the web server. And I see completely the content. So, and that is exactly what, what, what Sam was mentioned. So the start idea is looking at packets as they go by and not looking at the whole picture. And the data is trying different methods to bypass the system. OK, now let's try to do that with the McAfee Next Generation Firewall. I have exactly the same scenario. I just provide you with, uh, with the uh, shortening of the slide to show you how that looks like. What I use now is as well as exactly in the same scenario in the inline IPS. So I configured the Maxi Next Generation Firewall to be an inline IPS system. And on the left hand side I have my attacker. So my attacker is the evader tool, what you've seen already. And also on the, on the right hand side you see the victim web star. Exactly the same, I will use exactly the same website and will try to bypass the system. But also additionally we have an SMC server here in this combination. So, as I mentioned already, we have an SMC server, the centralized management console, to get a first complete overview of what happens in my environment, to configure my policies, to upgrade appliances, but also the ability to see live logs and events. So, after this demonstration, uh, from this point of view, I will directly link to the SMC, uh, SMC demo. But first, I want to show how that looks like when we're trying to bypass the next generation file for McAfee. OK, again, here you see well, I have exactly the same website. Uh, nothing is different. You, you know the, uh, the beta. Um, I just select exactly the same exploit. I will try to find the shell as well. I configure my test environment by using as well an inline IPS and just use the IP address which should be used to try to attack. You also have the ability to select the range and evade uh, trying uh, multiple IP addresses uh, to bypass the system because a couple of uh, applica um, um, appliances, for example, vendors have the ability to select these uh, IP addresses. I just will do, uh, do that as one and select, of course, my IP address, my target one. Okay. Let's try to run this attack as well, again, at first in a manual evasion, and I try to execute that first. As you can see, uh, evader is starting, and uh, again, here you've seen that the attack fails, 
And now let's have a look in the demo uh, in the environment of uh, my next generation firewall and looking inside the log. And as you can see here, you see that my IPS node inspection has detected that and has terminated the connection. So let's try to do that as well by automatic evasion by using um, the evader tool. I just run the automatic evasion and execute the system. So you will see it will start, and as you can see here as well, uh, that evader is trying multiple times and multiple inspection um, policies. As you can see here, it's terminating. And uh, also, you can run this for hours, and uh, McAfee and SEC will detect it automatically because we are looking at the full picture, and we are looking not only at, at the packet as they go by by completely uh, fully stack normalization. Okay, I just stop this uh, attack here, and will directly show you as well our SMC logs. So. That is the SMC what I've used to show you uh, the, uh, the blocks and the termination of the connection. And that exactly brings me and leads me to show you and to present our management console. So firstly, what, what you see here is uh, are the locks and the light locks. And what I would like to mention here, and I know this from other vendors, um, we have all these functionalities that I will show you today automatically included in the license don't need any additional package or software license to use the full functionalities of our SMC, especially, for example, let's say LiveLock. Firstly, I want to, uh, want to talk, uh, tell you as well that the SMC is like a browser. If you know how uh, the Firefox browser is working, it is absolutely easy to use the SMC. It's like a browser-based console, and everything is on one console included. So that means you have tabs. You can use as well the same short keys as you use on, on Firefox to open or close tabs. You also have the ability to create your own bookmarks and to create your own bookmarks toolbar. And now I just show you the locks, how the locks look like. And um, I just open the um, secure, my security engine view. And as you can see, I, I see uh, historically all the connections that are terminated or permitted or allowed. Also, it provides you with usernames and applications that are affecting uh, this uh, traffic. So we are looking inside the package to detect which applications created this traffic. The really nice thing is also the ability to automatically create a rule from a log entry, for example, to terminate or to block, for example, to terminate or to permit a specific action. Let's say, as you can see, Jill was using Dropbox. But uh, Dropbox shouldn't be allowed. You just can easily, directly from an event, you just right click and can create a rule to terminate the connection. So the combination between the locks and the rules automatically. We also can, of course, have really, really easy filter rules. If you would like to see, OK, Jill was using Dropbox, but what was using Jill at the whole day? And you just drag and drop Jill to the right-hand side and apply that, and you will see automatically all the traffic that Jill created. You can, you can see as well the Jill was on Facebook. If you would like, for example, to see as well how often was Jill on Facebook, you just drag and drop to Facebook as well to see how often was still using Facebook. So this gives you at first one really nice visibility and a really nice, really short, quick overview of what happens in your environment. But what happens with life locks? You also have, of course, the ability to create life locks in this environment. So we have here on top of that the play button. I just play. And as you can see here, you see really live blocks that are going through the firewall. So nice functionality is also to create automatically statistics and dynamic statistics when the traffic is going through the firewalls or through your IPS system. Okay. For that, I would just analyze the traffic light. I just analyze that here. And after that, I can create statistics. 
For example, if you would like to see, you saw that Jill was using Facebook, and you just want to see which applications are used in my environment for this specific science, you just click statistics, and we just launched the top application dashboard. You can create also your own ones, but I just want to show you how dynamic that is, because we have these dynamic dashboards automatically included by analyzing the traffic. From here, you also can pause that. You can drill down in every single event to see what happens and which user was creating, for example, this traffic. But you also can create, for example, dashboards, top web users, top users that are in your environment, and which uh, users using which uh, application. OK. I just so pause for that. Um, after that, the live blogs. We also have, of course, overview that provides you with information about your environment. But also, uh, for example, access overviews from where the connections are coming from or where, for example, your destination IP address is on. What, you can, what we can do, we have here, for example, an overview to create you, for example, with an application or access overview. This will exactly automatically provide you with information from your firewalls, uh, automatically connections. Uh, you also have the ability, of course, to create your own queries uh, that you will provide here on, on the screen. One point I would like to show you as well, uh, especially when we're talking about historical data, or if you would like to see which applications are used in your environment for one day, we also have an overview of an application usage overview that provides you with, with these uh, functionality or with these details. So for example, you also see which user, for example, was using the uh, which application. As you can see here, John uh, was using BitTorrent. You also can drill down to see when that happens, and you can create actions from that, for example, to terminate the connection to these specific applications. OK. That's a first an overview about the logs and, and the real details. You also have, if you would like to see an overview, for example, uh, from the firewall perspective, we have a system status that provides you really with a quick overview uh, of firewalls, of your firewall environment, of your IPS environment, and shows you the details uh, if everything is running or, for example, if there are some issues where you would take care of them. What you can do here is you can also create, um, get an overview from the connection perspective, how the firewalls are connected and how they are connected to your environment. You also have the ability to create from here your own network diagrams in the SMC directly. And of course, you have the ability to drill down on every single firewall uh, element. Let's say you want to see the London firewall cluster, it provides you as well here with the connection overview where the firewalls are connected. As you can see here, this is a cluster, a cluster from two nodes. And you all, we also have the uh, ISPs, two ISPs, and a load balancing between those ISPs. So that means if one ISP is down, automatically the firewall will send the, uh, the, um, the HTTP request, for example, through the other interface that is working. We also can detect the fastest link we are doing, uh, we are waiting for the acknowledge response from the TCP connection. So we are sending a SIM connect package and just waiting for the ACK response. And this link will give us the fastest ACK response. We will send the traffic to this one. So we are doing this per session. Um, so all the, the types of session, we will check that and we'll uh, provide you with the fastest internet. We send all the, the information to the fastest internet. You also see information at the bottom here about the nodes. You also can configure from here directly the uh, interfaces um, and also that uh, specific interfaces are, should be, for example, in different networks. You can create your own routes from here. You also uh, can quickly see statistics from the security engine load or, for example, if you would like to see how the status of the uh, interface Really quick overview from here. You also have the ability to create much more granular reports from that, but uh, just provides you here a really quick overview. We 
You also can from here upgrade, uh, for example, your firewalls. You just um, easily um, use the nodes. You by clicking the nodes, you have the ability to reboot the nodes. You also have the ability, for example, to say that this firewall should be go offline. For example, if you would like to upgrade a specific firewall. The point is that uh, what Sam uh, mentioned already, we are supporting different versions upgrades. So that doesn't mean that you have to bring two nodes at the same time to the same um, software version to bring them back again to a cluster. What we are supporting different version clustering, so you can, um, by without any um, packet loss, you can upgrade the firewalls, but just easily right click a firewall, take them offline, upgrade the software, bring them back to the cluster, and after that you can take care of the, uh, you can uh, have a look on the second one. Okay, just really here an overview uh, what uh, the uh, DTS uh, looks like when, when you're logging into the SMC. You also see from here, of course, the link aggregates, so if the links are up and running, so if, if there is an internet link what is broken from a specific IC, you will see that immediately. Like in traffic light system, you will automatically see that there is, for example, the color red and um, there is a problem at this moment. We will provide you as well with alerts here on the left hand side. As you can see, I created, for example, a text uh, to bypass in, uh, the IPS system, what I have in place, what I presented to you uh, before. And you will automatically provide you with a year of alerts. Yeah. If there happens uh, something in your environment, you can drill down as well in the alert to have look what happens on the, in your firewall environment. Okay, that's one really, really uh, point, especially when we're talking about visibility. But how is it with manageability, especially when we're talking about policy? So I, I showed you one point where we are, can directly, automatically create a rule from uh, an event. But how are the policy look like? I just uh, show you how that looks like. I just create a new tab. That's exactly what I mentioned with the browser. And I just created uh, for me a bookmark for a hat for the policy. I just open that and you will automatically provide you with, with your rule set. To, to give you more visibility in your rule set, we have multiple things implemented to make your life easier. On the one hand side, we have hierarchical templates. So that means you are creating a template if you, were, if you have in your environment uh, standard allow or deny rules, you can have them in the, in the template and you can create rules like sub policies below that and all the uh, rules that you created in your template are inherent. So from the, uh, from the overview, I just uh, show you how that looks like. Uh, I have here a firewall template where I have general allow and block rules and Below that, I have my headquarter policy where I'm in at this moment. You also have here a button sheet to see the inherent rules from the template, but here it gives you really granularity and much more visibility because you don't have just one rule that's a thousand of rules. Okay, let's add it to rules app, and uh, I just want to show you here on the left hand side, we have objects that you can directly use in your rule set. So all these objects are completely accessible from the whole SMC. So if you would like to create, for example, your side-to-side -side VPN, you have exactly the same object, would you just drag it drop to your specific uh, area, or for example, in your policy. And let's say we saw that Jill was using Facebook, and we would like, as we know that Jill is, let's say, in the London network, but Let's try to create a rule to block, for example, Facebook or, but more granularity, Facebook chat for, um, uh, for the long network. I just create here a new rule to add a rule before, and it will automatically provide you with, with a new rule set, and I easily can use these objects. What I mentioned before, we will, use, we will restrict the long internal network to add the Facebook chat. I just choose the network element and, for example, my network. And 
I just look for the London network, just drag and drop to my source. The destination? I don't know. I set this to any. And I just select the service. We can, of course, use that on the left hand side. But we also have the functionality of a free text search field. You just type in that you're looking something for Facebook, and it will provide you immediately with all the applications. So let's say Facebook chat, and we would like to refuse the connection. So that's it. It will automatically, it's easy, easy to use to create new rules and new, new rule items here. And uh, as well as with these objects on the side, you have complete access. And they will automatically create it, but you also have the ability to create your own objects if you like. After that, we have the ability, of course, to save the, uh, the policy. But we save the policy on our, uh, our SMC. But we want to push that out. We have the button here to save and install as well the uh, policy and we can select all the, uh, the uh, firewalls where we would like to have this specific rule. Let's say we created a rule for the London internal network, I just select the target London network. You also can select multiple firewalls if you like. You also have the ability of validating the policy. So we will check the policy for you if for example, if uh, all the uh, rules are working correctly, and if you do not have uh, a rule in place that's excluding your new created rules, you can automatically validate the policy before the policy will be uploaded. You also have a functionality in place of an automatic rule back. So if you configure the rule, for example, that is breaking the access between the SMC and the firewall, it will automatically roll back to the, uh, to the older version from your policy rules to have high availability. But after a month, for example, you would like to see how often, for example, a rule has hit it. Uh, we have this functionality automatically included. Just really, I just have here my rules as a rule counter. And I say this rule counter should be showing me the events for one time, uh, for one day. And it will provide you immediately with all the hits, how often you can be hitted. So you can run this for one half a year and can see how efficient the rule set is, what you created. And uh, you also have the ability then to, to delete, for example, rules that have never hit it before by, for example, to increase performance as well on your firewall, right? Okay. From here we are, so this, this is the point by upload, automatically uploading, for example, specific firewalls, uh, uh, firewall engines, if you like. You have as well here all the netting rules as well in place, um, the way you can create automatic NAT directly from here as well. And just by easily pushing this to, to your firewalls, it will be automatically installed. Okay. One last thing I would like to mention and would I like to point out is one of my really favorite functionality is our site-to-site -site VPN configuration. I just show you how easy it is to create a site-to-site -site VPN by just again opening a new tab and we are here in my VPN. I just create a new VPN, create a new new policy-based VPN, and give that just the name. So now, when I click OK, it will automatically provide you with a configuration interface to configure the site-to-site -site VPN. And you have here, uh, in the middle, you have the sta your central gateway, and on the right-hand side, you have satellite gateway. So you can easily, again, from the object, drag and drop your central gateway and your satellite gateway. Let's say you would like to create a VPN tunnel between our London VPN gateway and our Frankfurt VPN gateway, but also our Helsinki VPN gateway. When this is done, it will automatically provide you with issues. If there is something happens and uh, or there are any issues to open the tunnel, it will automatically provide you with these information. But you also have here the ability to see all the tunnels that will automatically open. For example, as you can see here, which, uh, which interface will be connected, but also, for example, as you can see here, when we're talking about uh, multi-link uh, and you have multiple ISPs combined, you 
the FMC will automatically open the tunnels through all the links what you what you have on your firewall if you like. So it will So this is a kind of argument VPN. So these argumented VPN uh, will automatically as well um, have a, still have an ongoing side-to-side -side VPN if, for example, one ISP is down. And you will see automatically that all everything is validated and all the key exchange uh, is, is fine and the communication is processed. So when you did that and you created your side-to-side -side VPN, you easily can refer as well in your policy uh, to say when, the, uh, for example, the side-to-side -side VPN should be applied to. Then it's automatically, uh, the creation is automatically done by just saving, saving this action and just referring this. Okay, I think Sam, you have to stop it because I would normally uh, present for hours when I'm not <laughs> stopping all the Well, no, Martin, thank you very much uh, for presenting. And um, yeah, I completely understand your enthusiasm for the product. So thank you very much for your time today. Uh, would you be able to hand the ball back to me? Yes. Um, we are going to open the, uh, the, the, the floor or the presentation up for a few questions now. Um, I've had a few questions come through um, uh, already, so if you just let me uh, share my uh, share my monitor, and I'm just gonna just gonna change over my uh, my VGA cable. So please be patient. I equally, if you have any questions that you'd like to uh, raise verbally, then you know just uh, just speak up, and either Martin or I will be able to help. So um, I think there come a couple of questions. <coughs> So there we go, Q&A, thoroughly uninteresting slide. Uh, the first question that we have here is, um, is does Intel Security Next Generation Firewall support BGP routing? Yes, absolutely. So we have the absolute granularity to configure uh, multiple routing uh, protocols, supporting multiple routing protocols. Of course, BGP is uh, the, the main one. Uh, the second question is surrounding uh, our multi-link uh, technology, and uh, I, I believe this reads, or well, maybe maybe this reading it. Um, uh, 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 how how does MACB multi-link uh, connect with multiple ISPs? Really good question. Yeah. So what we can do to on, on the SMC, you configure for each port, for example, you connect to your ISP, or just uh, setting up your static IP address. But you also, especially when we're talking about branch offices, you also can get an IP address automatically from the internet provider. Um, and after that, we can automatically combine those together by just creating a multi-link uh, multi element by just saying which links should be in a multi-link node. Yeah? By just selecting ISP1 and B and bring them as a multi-link and assign this multi-link to the network element. That will automatically be done from from the SMC and will automatically also redirect the traffic uh, through the fastest internet connection from from them by just by just checking and waiting for the act response. This uh, method, what I mentioned already. Great. Um, so I I sorry, not yeah. I got I think I got one question in regards to our SSL VPN. Um, yep. So. Um, which functionalities are included in our SSL VPN? Yes. Okay. So exactly. So we have automatically on the box IPsec VPN and of course our SSL VPN. So you can provide, for example, the SSL VPN users with an HTML website where you share internal resources to a remote users, let's say. And we are supporting at this moment HTTP, HTTPS, and OWA. But also, we will bring new functionality soon in our next generation firewall. Yeah. Right. Okay. So thank you very much for that, Martin. And uh, you know, if there are any questions uh, from this presentation and this session uh, that, that either haven't been answered or that you maybe think about uh, once we have logged off, please do get in touch with Axial Systems. Uh, they they are uh, you know for us they are ACE accredited. Uh, which means that speaking with Axial will give you the exact same answer and the same level of competency as speaking with Intel Security or McAfee. So, what options are there after this presentation? Now, uh, you know, for those of you who uh, who, who who will be giving Axial, uh, you know, a call in the coming weeks and months, um, you know, feel free to, uh, to 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 ask them and us, um, you know, about on-site evaluations and. Uh, 
trials for the Next Generation Firewall. There are some free downloads uh, on the uh, resources page for Next Generation Firewall, um, which you can do by visiting intelsecurity.com and clicking on Enterprise, then going through to Products, and clicking on the, uh, the menu option for Network Security. Uh, Number two, please feel free to download the Aveda tool. As I said before, it's uh, aveda.macfee.com. It's free to download, free to test. If you should run into any, uh, any difficulty or uh, have any questions around using the tool, uh, again, please feel free to con contact Axial. Uh, Axial will be able to walk you through the process and, and help you test against a, uh, a device of your choice. I would just uh, put the caveat against using the Aveda tool. Please do use it in a lab environment. Um, when we do test an exploit, it is a uh, it, 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 it is it, it isn't a dummy exploit. It, it is very much a live thing, um, and, uh, and and obviously not something you'd want to test in your production environment. Lastly, uh, we have a briefing center in Amsterdam, which is really our uh, our, 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 our sort of uh, key uh, European center for showcasing McAfee and Intel security technologies. Um, a number of different uh, activities we can uh, we can provide from this centre, including uh, monitoring our security uh, and event management systems, understanding how global threat intelligence and security connected work together, uh, understanding how we check for things like file reputation and analysis, um, but also it's a great chance to really engage with some of the uh, some of the uh, the engineers and the people who are behind the product. Um, and really get a deep dive understanding of uh, why we do what we do, how we do it, and, uh, 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 and, and you know what value this can bring to a business. And it really is a, a great, very futuristic center with you know iPads the size of desks and all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, of course, I would love to pay for everyone to fly out there, but uh, Intel Security cannot pick up the cost for uh, flying people to the EBC. So if you are mainland Europe or the UK and you find yourself in the vicinity. Just let Axial know, and Axial will be able to uh, to, to, to facilitate a visit. And um, you know, equally, if the BBC is out of reach for you, I know that Axial can uh, provide the same kind of presentation. I uh, can also provide the same kind of information, but either on site with you in the UK or uh, or from their site in the UK as well. Now, um, I'm just going to hand to uh, to Craig uh, quickly just to talk through some of our uh, call to actions. Um, which we also have for Axial, and just to give you a point of contact as well. So, Craig, if I can, if I can hand the ball to you, please. Thanks, Sam. Hopefully, you all found the presentation of the demo very informative, um, demonstrating the issue of advanced evasion techniques, and also the power and the flexibility of the uh, the next gen firewall platform. We're seeing that advanced evasion te techniques are now being recognized within the industry and cannot simply be pushed under the carpet and ignored anymore. Martin also demonstrated the power and flexibility of next-gen firewall, utilizing the multi-link capability and also the resilience of the clustering and the updated. Okay, in Sam's presentation, he mentioned Security Connected, and this is something that Axial strongly buy into. Axial are capable of translating this very powerful message of the security connected platform and turning this into reality using our highly skilled engineers and support staff. What we will be doing in the near future is emailing out a link to the recording on, on of, uh, of the recording onto YouTube. What we'll also be uh, doing, as Sam's mentioned in his previous slide, is offering the Evader tool as a service. So please, if you are interested in that, please contact your Axial account manager. If you have any other questions around the McAfee portfolio, the security connected message, or if you want to trial anything, if you want a proof of concept, please speak to your account manager via the uh, standard methods. The phone number is on the screen at the moment and the email address is on the screen and also obviously contact your, your account manager. And as Sam has mentioned again regarding the EBC, if that is out of reach for, for some of you, then please contact us again and we can arrange to have something similar created at our own demo lab. And just wrapping up, thanks again to Sam and Martin for your presentations and demonstration. Very much appreciated. And thanks to all of the attendees for your time. Thank you again.
Uh, not at all, and Craig, thank you very much for your time. And uh, for those viewers who, uh, who may be visually impaired, um, to contact Axial uh, on the, uh, the main support line is uh, a UK number, uh, 01628 To contact the Consultancy and Professional Services Unit at Axial, please dial uh, UK preface with 01628418. Uh, the Axial website is www.axial.co.uk. So uh, thank you very much for, uh, for your time today, and uh, please feel free to, uh, to you know, have a look at the Intel Security website, visit the Axial website, um, and you know, I, I hope that everyone remains safe and secure, and do contact us and Axial uh, should you like to know more. So thank you very much for your time.